A reading from uh, the letter to the Hebrews. Since the children share in blood and flesh, Jesus likewise shared in them, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who through fear of death have been subject to slavery all their life. Surely he did not help angels, but rather the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every way, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest before God, to expiate the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested through what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, Jesus left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose I have come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Trying to look just a little bit more deeply I couldn't help but notice the process by which Jesus heals the uh, mother-in-law of Peter, Simon. That he approached her, grasped her by the hand, and helped her up. It seems to imply that she was not yet, the fever had not yet left her. In other words, Still with the fever, he helps her to get up. She had to get up first. Then the fever left her. And for better or for worse, she assumed a very womanly role of uh, waiting on everybody. I'm not going to comment on that one. but. Uh, then people who are ill or possessed by demons and many people did not make any distinction between those two things uh, came to him and he drove them out and then he went to a deserted place and the last thing that happened the last time he went to a deserted place he was tempted by Satan by the devil. And one wonders where the Diabolos was in all of these times that Jesus withdraws to pray to his heavenly Father. 
How much was that devil at work trying to get in between Jesus and his father? I've always had the conviction, and this goes way, way back before I really knew what I was talking about, but I've always had the conviction, I still don't sometimes, but uh, I've always had the conviction that the devil, number one, does exist. Whether he exists according to our conceptions or artistic renderings of him is a different matter. But that there is that force of evil and that force of evil, that personalized force of evil, works between people. Not so much in them. We tend to concentrate on what seem to be very rare occasions where a person has taken possession of by the, by the devil. Perhaps that happens. What the reasons are um, probably has to do more with um, the communal relationships of that person with others than that person's own individual salvation, be that as it may. For the most part, we really, I think, fail to see that where Satan, where the devil is, and I prefer to use the word devil because that comes from the Latin and Greek, diabolos, which means to separate, to alienate, to cast apart. So from that very name, works between us, um, polarizes us. And Sadly, I think, when we accept one side of a polarization and then yield to the temptation to demonize those on the other side of the, of the polarization, we too are accomplishing the work of the devil. We are increasing uh, polarization and alienation. I do think that our job in union with Christ is to look for where we can personally build bridges. And I think the very first thing that we need to do is think of the, those who are on the other side of the polarizations that we might be more inclined to adhere to and try to understand Try to understand what values they are coming from. Try to understand what values in you or me they may be rejecting. And to try to deal on the level of understanding and what values are in operation. And to go beyond just the um, uh, demonization, the, um, the uh, uh, kind of having the other person figured out. And look for ways of saying, you know, how can I open dialogue? How can I, how can I achieve the kind of understanding that enables a conversation with the person whom I otherwise don't understand to possibly begin to happen. And how can I look for those, those possibilities? There's just one thing I'd like to conclude with that I think may bridge this. Going back to Hebrews, I'm, I'm very interested over the next couple of weeks to uh, uh, get more acquainted with the letter to the Hebrews because it's one that's always been a little bit on my periphery. And yet, uh, so I, of course, I did the first thing. I looked it up in Wikipedia. And I found something in Wikipedia quoting several scripture scholars that I did not find in that new Paulist uh, uh, commentary, you know. which is that there's, honestly, I bought one. <laughs> that's OK. I, I'm still, I'm still going to read it. It's still good. I bought it too. But, um, uh, what I found there was um, there, uh, there's a minority opinion among some scholars, and I, I always like minority opinions, 
uh, that um, the letter may have been written by Priscilla. I find that I, I've got to go into that a little bit more because um, it's thoroughly Pauline and yet in a very different sort of style and it also seems to be trying to build a bridge basically with the Jewish Christians who were experiencing persecution and were um, I don't want to put it, tempted to renounce Christianity because as Jews, they were actually, their monotheism and exclusive monotheism was actually tolerated, even respected by the Roman Empire, which Christians weren't. And as that split was happening, so she, she tries to go back, I think, and I'll, I'll probably keep referring to the author as she now, but she tries to go back into the Jewish scriptures and Jewish history um, to, to basically witness to, to, to Jesus himself. And of course what I'm, I myself am going to keep looking for in the letter to the Hebrews is uh, are there things that I, in my stereotyping, would consider to be feminine touches in there? Uh, particular perspectives for looking at um, uh, looking at the event of Jesus and his meaning for us uh, in a feminine way. And uh, uh, and I realize my own limitations in doing that, but it 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 could be. It could be something to convince somebody to write a book about, I don't know. <laughs>